Hello, I am Will Keith, and today I'm going to be teaching you some methods that I came up with to use a katana to defend your home in the event of a burglar. So, first we're going to do, what I'm going to do is, say the burglar has a baseball bat, pipe, some kind of large blunt object, about the same length as a katana. Obviously a burglar is not going to have a katana, that would be the most badass burglar ever, but I doubt that's going to happen to you. Um, Alright, so that would be the burglar here, my old beat up punching bag. Now, he has a baseball bat, just as an example. Then I'm, when I'm done with this, I'm going to show you some things to do in the event that your burglar is armed with a firearm, which will be unfortunate, and you can't just run up to him and stab him, obviously. If he has a gun, you got to be more stealthy about it. But, burglar, baseball bat. What you want to do is, instead of your normal chest devil katana grip, you want to extend it out more, keep him at range. He's not going to be able to walk into your blade. If he tries to go sideways, you keep him at length. If he tries to swing at you with the bat, just step back, move the blade out of the way. Baseball bats are heavy. If you swing it good, it's going to be way the hell over here. You can easily redirect a katana. Step out of the way. If he swings at you, step in, stab. Burglar John. Who's, uh... Hey, just see that a bunch of hillbillies tried to overthrow the government this week? Yeah, there we go. Who's prime minister right now? <laughs> uh, as of right now, I'm not certain. Another one of Trump's cabinet members did resign again today, which mm. means they might be talking more seriously about making those people vote about throwing him out of office because they just keep cowardly resigning before they would have to actually take that vote. I mean, that's pretty and cool. Be labeled as traitors to that's the United States for the rest of recorded history you know, or not. They, who's, who's to say how it's going? They're thinking about that next paycheck. A lot of new memes this week, though. I mean, that's, that's for sure. That's one thing we got going. Mm. Who was your... Uh... Pick to click. Pick to click on for the, for the, uh, the, the, the storming of the riots. Capitol. Yeah. I mean, it's tough to beat the guy who tasered himself in his balls until he died from it. That's like that really happened. Yeah, that like, was a it real. Seemed thing? like a fake thing people were passing around, but no, that's as close as we can figure out what was happening. Guy had a taser <laughs> on his belt. Huh? What? What? Tased himself in the groin, and then his his heart fucking stopped while it was happening. But then there's also the woman wow. who was trampled to death while carrying around a "Don't Tread on Me" flag. I mean, that's, that's you sweet, can't sweet write these things. Right there's there. just so many funny stories that came out of this fucking guy with the zip ties yeah. trying to kidnap uh, senators who works, works at for Kid, Kid Rock. Rocks. Who bartends at Kid Rock's Steakhouse? No, I, like, I mean I knew that because I recognized him literally. So many good stories yeah. coming out of coming out of this assault on the Capitol. It, it's almost hard to be sad that it happened. What about because there's so you, much to, to talk about now? You didn't even name my favorite man bear pig. Uh, who's the man bear pig? Here's that the one guy uh, shirtless wearing the, the oh the head guy with the, the Viking horns yeah. and his face painted like the flag. Yeah, man bear pig. Yeah, like a bear. From what I understand, hat on or he's something. been in prison since Friday and has refused to take oh. meals because they will not offer him all organic food. Oh, that's, I've that's, I've met him in the jail that's before. That's the new yeah. uh, that's the new update on your your friend mm. the man bear pig there. All organic food. Yeah. yeah. We don't need pussies like that fighting in Trump's army. Lame dad Good just riddance. beat up on Nancy Pelosi's desk. I don't know. He's in jail, but he doesn't seem After to have much personality. After he sniffed the sea. He doesn't seem to have much he Don't Don't bury the lead, pal. He would have been straight to AOC's office if he was looking to sniff seats. <sighs> I know. I know how these people think. Ooh. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. Mm. As of this recording, this yeah. is a Monday night, uh, the government has... Has not fallen officially. I don't know. By the time this is up, who's to say? That's why... It's tough to say moment to moment. You came to the right place to listen to us discuss Olympus has fallen. Wait, right? 
Oh, is that we're, we're getting yeah. pretty close to our yeah. uh, all president's action shit. So yeah. it's yeah, it's we're getting there. Whew, it might Gerard it, Butler, you might have just got out of the short list, pal. It might be irrelevant by the time we get to our president's fucking day theme coming we, up because we, we might not have a president anymore. Yeah, you know, we, might we no longer be a, a, a democratic republic. We have a uh, unofficial, official, never spoken promise on that show, and that's Gerard Butler will never make it onto this show. But no. I, I think he's he's on the short list now. Take the intensity I think we of have that to watch. emotions. We, well, you after that personal experience, the two of you had. That's right. How long did you watch him cry? 20 to 30 minutes oh. in a post-machine gun preacher Q&A. The man couldn't pull himself together. How far away would you say you were? Oh, I was front row, man. I, oh. I could have reached out and... Reached out and grabbed him, abracadabra. Why didn't you? Maybe you should have. You should have maybe you at least comforted like, yeah, him. Yeah, patted his shoulder or something. You should have been. You should have just been like, just everybody stop. Nobody just wanted everybody to stop. make any sudden moves while it was happening. Yeah. While See, Gerard Butler was sobbing into his hands. He's a pretty big man. We could tell that. Uh, no, he's like one of those Hollywood guys. Okay. Where, like, I mean, he's big for Hollywood, but you yeah. know, they're all fucking Tom Cruise little. So yeah. this guy's kind of just average size to was, like play it, Hollywood big. He was like a James Brolin when yeah. we saw James yeah, Brolin. They've all got the bobbleheads. Like they yeah. look bigger than they are because they all yeah. come equipped with a big bobblehead. I've got a huge head. I should. I should go to Hollywood. Oh yeah, think about it. It's not too late, man. Yeah, some people not. have those, you know, late in life career just blossoming. Yeah, I'm not doing anything, you know. Neither are you. That's why you're listening to Baby Oil and Blow. It's mm-hmm. uh, action, extravaganza, Palooza, shoot 'em up. Everybody dies. Go fuck yourself. Kind of time. I am one half go of your host. Fuck yourself. I am the Matt O. With me. Don't don't accept any substitutes. No, hell no. Mm-hmm. With me, <laughs> he is the executive. Bar manager at Kid Rock's Bar and Grill. He is zip tie, Punisher logo guy to my man, Bear Pig. He is Nate Adams. Ahoy, ahoy, everybody. That's the guy you want to be. On a lighter note, Carnival season started down in uh, New Orleans. I've been been doing a lot of that stuff on the... Is that one of them uh, ocean cruise liners? Or is that Uh uh, one of them naked places in like... Think like... All the parades Jamaica. have been canceled, but I've been seeing people post a lot of pictures of the king cakes they're eating, which mm. has made me very jealous. What's a king cake, my friend? You know, one of those cakes with the little, little plastic baby in it. I got oh. like the all the New Orleans colored sugars on the top, and whoever bites into that plastic baby and chips a tooth is supposed to have a lucky uh, oh, lucky year coming up or whatever. That's really weird. Eat it, the baby. That's a really weird thing. They're very tasty. I'm thinking about having one flown to me is my point. Thinking about flying to now. Yeah, why not get on an airplane and uh, go to <laughs> a city known for its crowded bars right yeah. now? It's Airlines cheap, that's why, friend. I, are they really, though? I mean... Look, I got through the holidays. People kept saying that, but then my crazy mother flew to Florida, a.k.a. Yeah. the hellmouth of COVID, right. and she was like, oh, no, it's all the normal prices. The flights were packed, pretty much. A, and yeah. we paid the same amount we always do. Yeah, pretty much. And also, rest in peace, my mother died recently of yeah. COVID-19. She had a decent run. Or at least deserves to. She had an okay run. I'm thinking about going down there. You know, the holidays are over with. Mm-hmm. I got a death wish now. I don't That's care right. if I live or die anymore. No. I don't, like, I'm not going to feel bad if I pass COVID on to somebody anymore. That's over with. In the apocalypse, does it really even count anymore? Right. So I did the right thing. I social distanced through the holidays. Mm-hmm. Now, now I'm just like, you know what? I want to go to Disney Fuck World you, when there's no lines. I'm not seeing you again for another like nine months or whatever. Yeah. What do I care? Yeah. Maybe they'll never see me again when I die when, on. When that do they Iron do that Lung. big drinking festival down there at uh the Disney World? Um. Oh, the booze, the wine festival is beginning of October. Oh, that's too long which from now. Coincides Way too long from now. with Hollywood Horror Nights. We need to go. Okay, yeah. Let's put it on the docket. Yeah. It's happening in 2021. Until then, I don't care if we're all dead from like fucking and elephant we'll pretend COVID or whatever the next one dead. is. I saw that a couple of gorillas got given COVID at a zoo. Oh, no. Like the San Diego Zoo or something. First time anybody's ever seen COVID jump from a person to an animal. Yeah. We're killing the gorillas. You know why uh, gorillas have such big nostrils? Why is that, Matt? Because they got them big fingers. That's probably true. You got to pick a boogie some way, somehow. 
Uh, we're still in January, and that means we've still got our January theme going here on the Action Movie Podcast, Baby Oil and Blow. If you've been listening along, it is our New Year's Ninja Movie Party. We've been watching a lot of ninja movies. Mm-hmm. We're fucking up to our eyeballs in the men in the black pajamas. Yeah. The fighting in desert is very different from fighting in Canopy Jungle. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was a foot soldier, before, whereas this thing should... Uh... You know, should be a piece of cake. I mean, I had an M16 Jacko, not an Abrams fucking tank. Me and Charlie, eyeball to eyeball. Yeah. That's fucking combat. The man in the black pajamas, dude. Worthy fucking adversary. Who's in pajamas, Walter? Shut the fuck up, Donnie. So let's get into our uh, rundown this week of our latest ninja movie. The rundown this Mm. week is going to be brought to us by... The Trump Hotel and Casino in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Brought to us by the Trump manatee. Uh, He's... He's the one that's... (laughs) You see that? You see that today? The Trump manatee? Yeah, they found a manatee that... uh, some hillbilly just carved the word Trump into really big on his back. What? Yeah. Now they're looking for any uh, updates on uh, who might have carved Trump into this <laughs> this endangered animal's back really big. Yeah, that's probably, a real life thing that's happening in the world. It's probably, uh, probably a Bernie supporter. Yeah, probably. You know it's Antifa out there uh, capturing different things. Hey, you know what I want to be a part of? And Quifa. Oh, is, is that a thing? Is, uh-huh, I just made just like it. I just made it. Going on? Who's joining? Uh, pff, Send me your emails at email.org.net at yeah, Hotmail. No, fucking Center for Biological Diversity, a nonprofit, is offering a $5,000 reward for information. Hey, there you, you go. You can get a fucking solid five grand, you know. All you dingbats you know and wackadoos. You the Florida man who carved into that fucking manatee. We know the handful of you that are listening to this are scumbags Easy and probably from five Florida. Easy grand. Fucking throw your cousin under the bus. Hell yeah. I, I saw myself. That was Joe Joe. He carved that into the back of that manatee. Fucking, you know what's thicker than blood? Five grand. Five grand. Right now. Thick fucking as fuck, turn bro. Turn motherfucker in. The rundown is of the film Ninja 2 Shadow of a Tear. Uh, what year is that from? I didn't write that. Uh, 2015? 2015? 2015? Okay, yeah. Somewhere. Somewhere around there. Ninja 1 is from 2013, I think, so that sounds That sounds right. absolutely yeah. right. Sounds about right. This is the sequel to a film simply titled Ninja. This oh, this is, is 2013 as well. Oh, I guess they okay, did these maybe, all at once. Maybe Ninja is earlier than that. Yeah. 2013 was popping out to me for some yeah. reason. Yeah, you know. well, that's probably why. Whatever. Oh, Ninja's 2009. 2009, yeah. okay. Whoa, that's a whole four years later they got... They got back the ninja crew back together hey, to do this you, thing. You got to make sure the story's right. Shadow of a Tear is a film with a runtime of ninety-five minutes. Beautiful. It's a film with Tell a me budget more. that I think is a mystery. I don't really know what they spent on this thing. Feel me in a mystery. According to BoxOfficeMojo.com, this is a film that did an international gross of five hundred and forty-four thousand dollars. <laughs> I'd say that's <laughs> wildly <laughs> large. Uh, yeah. We're going to call this one a cult hit because it's starting to build a bit of a a following here on the online, but we'll, we'll call certainly it nobody saw it when it was out there in theaters. Nate, I guess you could call it a real success. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if it played in theaters, I don't know. These these people we're talking about today are straight-to-video legends, hey, from what I'm told. And pretty soon we're going to be saying... What's a theater, old man? Yeah, that's true. Cinema Verde. We've got the local AMCs open here in Indiana because it's Indiana. Oh, wait, they're open? Yeah, they're open. But uh, I'm going. I went a couple weeks ago. Oh, it what'd was, you see? Uh, I went to see that promising young woman with the Carrie Mulligan. Mm. It was. Were you able to rub one out to that? Uh, no, no. There's really nothing, okay. nothing sexual going on in there. But I also don't know. It was who a Carrie fun little Mulligan revenge is. movie. She normally uh, stars in real real movies for grown ups, so mm-hmm. that makes sense to me. But it takes me, I recommend it. It takes me ten whole years to figure out who white starlets are. Oh yeah, <laughs> all these white people look alike. Yeah. I saw in my little uh, journal, my online movie journal yeah. on the letterbox, so it was the first time I had been in a movie theater since January seventh when I saw Little Women. So. Ooh. Went from Little Women to Promising Young Woman. What a year. Those are the two two movies I saw in theaters in 2020. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Sounds like you're not allowed in your schools in Chuck E. Jesus, man. Somebody give me a feminine studies degree uh, or something. I fucking earned it right now. I'll tell you that much. Young Women, Little Women, Prevert. Director of this movie is Isaac Florentine. 
a man who directed 26 episodes Ooh. of WMAC Masters back Ooh. in the mid-90s. Bulk of the series, I'd say, if yeah. not every um, episode of WMAC Masters. You hear? I, that make I, him the I, only man who directed episodes. Did you hear WMAC that, Nate? Masters? A door just opened up. Mm. I think it's time to induct another member yeah. to the Baby Oil Bl- guy, and Blow Hall of Fame. This guy, that's uh, legendary was really work. Blowing my hair back back when I was, I don't know, twelve or thirteen years yeah, old, and that show was on Saturday. He's mornings. in the HOF, my man. Also, he's done a ton of episodes of Power Rangers. Just every series of Power Rangers, he's done like a handful. Of oh which, man, which one? that's Power Rangers power. Turbo, tar- t- Power Rangers Zapped Supreme, like whatever. You know, um, I'm not going to lie. Every, I was watching this movie, and there was a moment where I was like, this kind of smacks a Power Rangers. Yeah, I watched uh, the original Ninja as well as this one. Not really watched, we'll say. I had it on in the background while I was working out and stuff. Mm-hmm. That one is lousy with Power Rangers. That one's got the stink of Power Rangers <sighs> We should have watched that over. one, damn it. It's, it's pretty okay. We can get into that. Yeah, this guy does a lot of straight-to-video things, does a lot of corny martial arts TV programming. Well... Stars of this film, we'll get into this. Number one, main guy I was looking towards, trying to figure out who's this guy I've been hearing about, who's this guy I've been hearing whispers about on the internet as the new king of action movie schlock, Scott Adkins. Yeah. Playing Casey, the classic white orphan who's Mm. raised in a ninja compound and is trained over the course of his life to be a better ninja than any of the Asian ninjas. How else do white folks get classic film archetype there at this point? Everybody knows that character. Uh, He's the star of one million straight to video martial arts movies, as we were saying. Uh, Also, though, a couple roles in a couple larger ones. He was Hector in The Expendables 2. If you sat through that piece of shit. Also, Agent Kylie in The Bourne Ultimatum. Uh, which is one of those is Matt, that, Matt is, Damon movies. Oh, I've only or, seen the Renner one. Or yeah, I was going to say, or it one. might be the Renner one. I'm no, not sure. I don't think it was. I can't. I saw one of those Bourne movies on cable, and I don't remember how it went, but either I thought it was the original the whole time, and I was actually watching a sequel, or I thought mm. I was watching a sequel the whole time, yeah. but then it turned out I was actually watching the original. Right. Either way, I remember when it was over. I was like, what? That's either the original one or not the original one? How could that be? That makes zero sense from what I saw on TNT programming. Born. Uh-huh. More like Boren. Yeah, Jason Boren. If you ask me. Yeah. I don't know. It was fine for watching Hungover on a Sunday afternoon on TNT, from what I remember. He's no runner. Mika Hiji is in this film as Namiko, the pregnant wife of Scott Adkins, white ninja, who is killed very early on in the film so that he could have a reason to, you know, be angry and kill people. She's from the first ninja. Uh, She gets a lot more to do in that first ninja. They kind of get, like, framed for a murder together, and then they're running around. This one, it's just like... Are her ears big in that one, too? It's just like, we don't really want to have tiny women doing any action in this one, so we're going to forget that you're also a ninja, and you're just going to be the wife who gets killed. Good. Uh, she's been in a lot of Asian Porn. television, from what oh, I can tell, okay. but also go, you, she's been in a ahead. handful of movies. Porn movies? She was in Ninja, she was in Ninja 2 no, here, okay. but also All she right. was in a movie called Rogue Ninja, Por- also she nah. was in a movie called Alien vs. Por- Ninja, mm. so she can that, that, that could have been porn in that she last She knows how one. to pick her product. Yeah. Uh, Kane Kosugi is in this film as Nakabara. He's an old buddy of Casey's Nakabara. who now runs his own ninja camp Nakabara. in Thailand where he trains dozens and dozens of ninjas. Nakabara. He is one of the sons of ninja movie legend Sho Kosugi. Ah, he was yeah. in the film Pray for Death yeah. as a tiny child, which we'll probably huh. be watching here in a couple weeks, maybe, That'll allegedly. Nice. He's also been in a ton of direct-to-TV action movies and f- I think cutaway scenes from video games he's done a lot of, it seems like. Okay. It's like, I'm going to be one of those people who acts in the, the little cutaway cinematic scenes in video games while you're playing them. Well, yeah, they just do, like, all the acting now, Nate. Like, yeah. the whole thing. Like, it's more than just that. Get me into a studio. A lot of Give voice work. Uh, the most promising sounding thing I saw. Nolan North in. is a millionaire. It was a 2002 film called Muscle Heat he's in. I was like, I want to check me out some Muscle Heat. That sounds good. <laughs> All right. Uh, coming up the rear here, Shun yeah, Sugata sure. is in this film as Goro, the head of a drug cartel who's <sighs> also the little brother of the dude who Casey Sensei killed back in the day, who has now sworn revenge on Casey Sensei 
we are explained in one very lengthy, yeah. lengthy scene of just like he's got backing story dialogue in this film. He's got forearms and a ponytail yep. and he's super ripped. That's right. He's Goro. He played not Goro from Mortal Kombat. Oh, strangely, God but he it. was the, the crime boss in Kill Bill and he mm. played the character who was it? the dragon in the My Best Friend's Japanese Wedding episode of Fuller House. Uh, any anybody out there has sank their teeth into that Netflix series? I bet you know what I'm talking about. There. Checked out after about two or three episodes. Probably a probably a pretty sweet payday right there, huh? Check Getting on right one episode out. of Fuller House. Check right out of there. Even with uh, Stephanie Tanner's newly gigantic fake tits that debuted. Oh, they're uh, huge. Yeah. The show. I yeah. feel like that would have kept your attention for a little bit longer. Oh, you know me. I like them small and the butts big. Mm. Okay, more of a Marla Sokolov fan. Gia was on that show, from what I understand. Always. From what I can tell. Always. Nah, she had some big tatas. She too, did. From what I remember. Gia was just stacked in general. That <clears> shit <throat> had bumper for days, and she smoked, so you know that she pokes. She smokes, she pokes, mm-hmm. man. Tagline of this film, yeah. I guess we'll move on to, because I don't know any of the other actors who were fucking in this nah, film. there's nobody. Tagline is, an ancient hero returns with a vengeance. Well, Okay. Just like in in the royal sense, maybe I don't think they're the royal we saying Casey Adkin or Casey whatever Scott Adkins is is ancient. I think White just... Messiah returns after being crucified yeah. on the ninja uh-huh. cross. The ninja, the the ancient legend of the ninja is back. I think we're bringing back the ninja movie as a point here. Oh, okay. Let's get into the plot. This plot synopsis seems far too long to be an actual synopsis, but maybe yeah. it'll help us out here because. I'm sure we weren't paying much attention to this film outside of when the fight scenes were happening. Yep. Fight everyone and trust no one. It's the code of survival practiced by martial arts master Casey Bowman after his life of domestic bliss is shattered by a savage act of violence. It's true. Vowing revenge, the fearless American stealthily tracks the killer from Osaka to Bangkok to Rangoon with the help of a wise and crafty sensei. His only clues, a series of victims whose necks bear the distinctive mark of strangulation by barbed wire. What? Fighting to avenge, as well as to survive, Casey must sharpen his razor-like responses and take his battle skills to the next level. Even using deep meditation to fake his own death? I don't remember that being a scene in the movie. Did that happen? Oh, he sure did, yeah. Uh, His target, the sinister drug lord Goro, who is flooding the streets with deadly meth cooked at his remote jungle factory. To prepare for his ultimate confrontation, Casey must finally become an invisible warrior worthy of the name Ninja. That's not true. He was already a ninja in the first movie. Yep. But when his prey is cornered, an unexpected twist shows Casey that his battle is only beginning. He truly can try. Trust no one. DTA, motherfucker. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. What? Let's get into our next segment of the podcast that we always do after we're done with the rundown. It's called Bullet Points. Where we go into our notes and we read all of our notes and then we... I don't know, banter back and forth about them on a good episode, but yeah. more just like uh, confuse ourselves with what we've written down on the poorer episodes. Hey. There's a good mix of both out there. Some of y'all might archive. think the poorer's the gooder and the gooder's the poor, you know? Who's to say? Who's to say what you perverts are into? You fucking sick fuck. Matt, what's yeah, your what's up, first man? bullet point, my dude? Um, Old-timey newsreel. Old timey newsreel is a cool way to open a fucking movie. Because, yeah, they're they're trying to make us feel like we're like sitting in the cinema, like uh, in nineteen yeah. forties, getting ready to watch a talkie or something. And it's like it's a newsreel footage of telling us what a ninja is. It's like, hey man, it's fucking twenty thirteen. Mm-hmm. The only reference we know of this is the one in Roger Rabbit. Okay. Oh yeah, there we go, Roger Rabbit. That's one. That's one we got to cover probably someday. That's yeah. a that's an action packed film, Matt. I'm absolutely fine with that. So decision. yeah, if you're familiar with Roger Rabbit, you're familiar with what's happening here. Old timey newsreel. Hey, we got ninjas here. Yeah. See, ninjas. Uh, uh, ancient warriors. Uh, Attack in the dark. Eyes don't look right. See. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's pretty cool. I enjoyed it. We see a lot of ninjas killing people on camera, and I'm like, well, this was a real newsreel. They probably wouldn't be slicing people's heads off while the fucking news crew was around. I'm gonna uh, suspend my disbelief though. From yeah. Ninja 2, Shadow of a Tear. Yeah. Why not? Especially when the second scene is a sparring session at a ninja school where Scott Ooh. Atkins is just like Ooh. beating up a little lady. 
She's got a bow staff. And she's going to try to attack me. I'm such a cool fucking badass big white guy that like slap around a little, little even these Asian armed ninja. Asian ninjas aren't as good as doing Asian stuff as I am. Right. I'm fucking the great white hope over here. What do you got? Nope. I got a block for that. What's that? Nope. Block that shit too. There's a little twist here though. Because what that is? after like uh, he blocks all her shit, he says something where he's just like, oh Blah, blah, blah. Also, if someone is your wife, and then like sort of looks directly into the camera, and I'm like, what? Uh That they're married now? Or was he proposing to her? I don't even know. Uh Something happens in this scene to let us know these two are a married couple. Oh, maybe she did. Oh, also, she's the daughter of his sensei who was killed in the first movie by a traitorous, uh, it's like sort of like Enter the Ninja, where there was one guy who was like, I don't think we should be training a white guy. I'm mad about it. Yeah. So then he tries to take over the dojo and kills a sensei, but yeah. then ends up failing because Scott Adkins kills him in the end of the movie, mm. which is awesome. Especially because the bad guy in the first one wears like a sweet mix of a classic ninja outfit and like black modern tactical military gear. Ooh. So he kind of just looks like Snake Eyes the whole movie. Oh, complete with like some I'm night vision helmet goggle Hell things yeah. that like flip over his ninja mask all cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of cool looking stuff in that first one. They didn't do a good job at all of explaining uh, Casey's father-in-law. No, in this no. movie, yeah, they I didn't, was so fucking didn't confused do that, uh, having not seen the first. But also thinking back to the first, there's really it, one sentence is all you need to do it. Just what I said, like yeah. the entire first movie takes ninety minutes just to establish that. Oh, he's gonna huh. take over this fucking dojo now. And start banging the daughter of the original sensei. Okay. And then we open on this and film. And here we are. And we open on this film. Okay, well, he's smart. He's funny. He speaks Japanese. You and, know, he's and he's jumped at the shopping mall. What? Yeah, you, no matter what a weeb you become trying to ingrain yourself in this fucking culture, yeah. you're going to stand out like a sore thumb when you're a big, tall, ripped to shit white guy shopping at a Asian shopping That's mall true. over there in Asia. Dropping 30 yen, 30,000 yeah. yen all willy-nilly. Whatever that is. I don't, couldn't tell. I don't, I don't know what the conversion is, but I was like, he's buying a pendant? Spoiler alert, he was buying like some sort of pendant for his wife. And yeah. I'm like, do they not have engagement rings over there? He's buying her like a pendant that means like happiness or something. Well, they're already married. Is that what they do? That's the, they're then they're I was like, married. I thought he was asking her to marry him when they he did that cheeky thing in the, the sparring session. And then I'm like, well, I guess no. I guess he's just out buying her a present. And I'm like, dude, if you're already married, why are you out buying your wife a present? Uh, you got her now. We'll find out later. There's <laughs> there's no reason to be nice to this woman. You I'll tricked you her. Later. I'll tell you later. Oh. When you're older. Oh. There's but, a, there's some some thugs though. Some scruffy yeah, looking hoods, hooligans man. that are like this guy is fucking carrying around 300,000 yen on him some to buy yep on a hood. Really not impressive looking friendship Ew. pendants or whatever. Ew. I'm just saying, get a fucking diamond ring in this movie. Have some fucking class ninja too. Bro, Christ. you've never been jewelry shopping on the streets of Osaka, my man. Like Oh, this never go jewelry shopping anywhere. Peace, bro. Like it's a traditional Any bigger peace, waste bro. of money on the planet than fucking jewelry. Jewelry. I guess tattoos. Maybe people who just spend all their money on tattoos. That's a pretty big waste. Of I money. got a lot of those too, yeah, man. I yeah, sure do. taking those to the grave. A lot of a lot of ankle bracelets. A lot of trashy tattoos. I got a lot of those too. On the other side of this table. Ankle bracelets. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, these guys start following him around like they're gonna beat him up and take his pendant he just bought at the K Jewelers or whatever. And yeah. I'm like, Guys, I'm, a, I'm already like, this isn't a good he's idea. He's a big ripped as shit ninja man. Yeah. You're a couple of scruffy looking little street yeah. turds. Like, what are you thinking? He's just going to ninja fight you and you're going to get your asses kicked. Yeah. They chase him to the cart shed at a country club, apparently. Yeah. There's, he's Scott Atkins leaving out the like service doors of the shopping mall, I think. I don't know. I don't know how this fucking worked right here. He's just in a... In a Fucking Sally Port full of golf carts here. Well, he he works part time at the Cinnabons, uh, oh, just so oh, okay. he can get some insurance because well, you can't good. really do that. You know, being the sensei yeah, of a ninja no. dojo, so uh-uh. he's got access to all the employee areas. That's why he's good for coming him, out man. the back here, and yeah. yeah, he hops up on the roof to spy on these guys, and he's like, yeah, they're a couple of idiots. I don't need to worry about them. But then hops off the roof and like almost lands on another like slick guy who I yeah. thought was going to be like a third street tough, but he's really just like some like douchey looking guy who was at yeah. the mall. Like, hey, who are you jumping off the roof? Yeah. And then the street toughs are like, 
What's going on over Wait, there? Who jumped off the? Could oh. that maybe be the w- big white guy we That's were looking that for? Fucking dude, we're looking so for. First bro. scene, like this is some piss poor ninja in right now, where his big oafy fucking ass is just lumbering around, getting in broad daylight, just yeah. fucking getting found by the people he's trying to like ninja away from. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you know, follow these guys till it's nighttime, and then slink into the shadows like a ninja would. Instead, though, we get a big knife fight where these guys pull out knives and they're like, give us that pendant. And he's like, nah, bro. Nah. And then he fights them and they're just punks, though, so he kicks their asses. He does. He kicks them real good. What's important to see here, though, is this knife fight is pretty decent knife fight because it's actually choreographed. Yeah. They actually do more than one or two moves at a time before mm-hmm. cutting to another angle. Mm-hmm. So it's like some, some decent chain fighting going on you get to do. Camera's pulled back far enough to where you can actually see what's happening. It's like, hey, there's going to be some fighting that doesn't give me a headache in this movie. I look forward to that. Yeah. I hope he fights lots of people going forward. Like, fuck you. Quit putting good actors in movies and then just making them fight with computers. so dumb. Get a guy who's trained to fight and has no idea how to act. Yes. And then don't give him much dialogue. Yeah. Like they do here with Scott Atkins. Like... (laughs) This guy... He says a lot more in the first Ninja, I feel like. I feel yeah. like in this one, he's got a lot less lines. And I oh. think, good good adjustment. That was a oh. good note, Isaac nice. Florentine. We're going to have you talk less in the next one. Either way. Because you're not great at it. These kids, these kids, it's a lost art, man. You, you, they need to learn about these kinds of journeyman oh, yeah. actors. Oh, we're going to cast Scarlett Johansson, A-list actress, as a big superhero, and then teach her how to kung fu fight. Boo. What happened to Cynthia Rothrock, man? Why isn't she an Avenger? Is she still alive? Uh, as far as I know, but I'm oh. certain, you know, women go downhill pretty fast. Yeah, no okay. She can still do All anything right. physical. Yeah. Uh, he's back home after fighting off his would-be robbers, and his wife's all like, Oh, I'm worried about stuff. Oh, what's going on? Might those crooks come back? And he's like, Oh, fucking idiot crooks not coming back. They're just a couple of scumbag street kids or whatever. It doesn't matter. And he's all like, Check out this pendant, though, I bought for you. Pretty Boom. sweet, huh? She doesn't really say anything. No. I'm like, either she also thinks this is a pretty lame pendant like I do and was expecting a diamond ring, or this is just like an Asian thing where like women don't really talk much yeah, in Asia. Yeah, she's not allowed yeah, to. That's, that's, she did say, like, so. she's like, culturally just what goes on. It means happiness. Yeah. It's like, oh, fucking cool, man. Almost as good as one of those hearts broken in half. You guys could be best friends forever. He, this is a an eighth grade gift he just bought his, he his wife. He got her that. It's what an eighth grader buys their girlfriend, Matt. To display their both their overall happiness over her being with child, Nate. And we're just looking at this fucking pendant over and over again to the point where I'm just like, are we going to find out this thing's like made out of some sort of awesome super heroin or something? Yeah. <laughs> like, that's why everybody's trying to get it, because it's like a cool, just like drug pendant or something, but... None no. of that happens. I those, don't know why we're spending so much time looking at this dumb fucking pe- pendant here. Those two scumbags just wanted to steal it. Yeah. And, and, and also, yeah, it seemed like they were going to connect to the bad guys that are the bad guys of the movie. And later on, it's just kind of like, no, I don't think so. No. I think they were just a couple of idiots the robbing one, people yeah. at the mall. Right. Exactly. Uh, yeah. But the, the bombshells dropped in this scene. Old bitch is with child. Yeah. Scott Adkins is going to have a little baby Scott Adkins. That's going to be nice. She's so far along. She's already having weird nighttime cravings of yep. chocolate and seaweed. She's shaking this guy awake and fucking he's in a dead sleep. And she's like, go down to the corner store and buy me some chocolate and seaweed. Take your trick ass down to the corner store and give me food. Yeah, That's I don't think said. so. Fucking it's it's the middle of the night. We were sleeping. Scott's you can like, wait till the morning. We'll get some chocolate for breakfast or something. I'm not fucking putting pants on and going outside. This guy's this guy's totally pee whipped is my point. right? He there. is indeed. Yeah. Fucking Casey Bowman or whatever the fuck your name is. Hey, man. Come on. She's got your nuts in her purse, man. I just hope nothing happens when he goes to the store. I mean, clearly, you're leaving your pregnant wife alone in the middle of the night you when you know happen? that you're a ninja who lives in a ninja movie world. This is the perfect yeah. time for ninjas to come and brutally butcher your wife in the dead of night. Bro, you're in a sequel to an action movie. Yeah, What'd you come expect? on. Like, There's, get your head out of your ass. You can't have fucking female characters through several sequels in an action movie series. Yeah. She's going to die if she shows up again in the second one. I'd just real quick like to read you my notes on those two scenes we just went through right there. Yeah, sure. Uh-huh. Back home with Boo. Uh-huh. Hope she don't die. No. Yeah. 
Huh, Ninja Swimmer. No, yeah. Because he kind of looks like a Ninja Swimmer. Butchered by ninjas, really big. Oh, yeah. Fucking yeah. like uh, Dave Schwimmer fucking did some cycles, maybe. Yeah. yeah. He could he could get close to what Scott Atkins is looking like. Yeah. What what sucks is we don't even really get to see the scene where she's attacked by ninjas and fucking nah. killed. He just comes home to find her with like some fucking vampire fang marks in yeah. her neck. And I'm like, Ninja 2, are you about to turn into an on-the-sly vampire movie? Because that'd be a pretty welcome, weird twist. Yeah, this thing. yeah I'd take him fighting down or fighting some ninjas. Yeah. Doesn't know? quite go down that way, though. Fucking, nah. uh, what happens next here? They go to the uh, funeral. Oh, yeah. They He's have a funeral, funeral for his dead wife. That's Logically, that's what yeah. you'd do, I guess, if you came home from the corner store to find your wife with all of her blood drained out of two vampire fang-shaped yep. uh, wounds yep. in her neck. Yeah. Gotta have a funeral. And they did. But then, like, uh, it's just like, uh, oh, hey, guy whose wife just got murdered. I'm your friend from the past. Let's sit next to a koi pond and talk to each other for a while. That was his brother-in-law. See, that took me a while to figure out because I was like, I don't recognize this guy from the first movie. Or no, wait. Uh, none of this. I don't think brother. he was in. I think, yeah. Was it his brother? I think he was fucking his wife's brother, which would make him yeah. a sensei's kid as well, but... I think that's only said in like a one-off, just like, yeah, did I really weird. hear that? Or yeah. did, it's not really established who this guy is yeah. very well, because he's not a guy from the first movie. He's not I'm Kabara. Like, I just, we're, we're just pretending like we know who this guy is, and he's a close friend. He's, and I was like, uh, it doesn't smell right to me. Kabara. Nothing smells right here. This guy suddenly showing up from Thailand and being like, I'm your yeah. great friend from the past, I assure you. Hey, it's me, my man. Nakabara. Before you know it, we're in fucking Myanmar here. I don't know how we got there, but we're in a cool army base, and like everybody looks mean, and I'm like, oh, these are definitely the bad guys. Yeah. You could tell by their mean faces that these are definitely the bad guys. We see that we're making a lot of drugs in this army base right here, right. which is kind of cool, but I don't like that they had like dudes in hazmats making it. Like this is br the Breaking Bad. Yeah, you got to go with the classic '80s movie thing of women stripped down to their underwear, processing Thank you. all your drugs. Thank like, you. you. So you got to see if they're stealing. A lot of talk about how this Isaac Florentine and Scott Atkins are making all these like trash action throwback to the no. '80s movies. You're not getting a bunch of just like little Asian women in yeah. their panties and bras fucking don't, dealing with these drugs. Don't that half makes no ass sense it, to man. Me. Full yeah. ass it. Full ass. Every in. time. Okay, put your full ass into this thing. But some goon meets with Goro, the boss, mm -hmm. and he's like, hey, goon, uh, I hear you've been skimming off the top and stealing some of our drugs. And I'm like, ooh, is this where we're going to learn that he stole a bunch of drugs and then ooh. turned them into the drug pendants? And you got to, like, yeah. put some, like, chloric acid on it or something so that it dissolves into the super drug. Nate, you that's, let that, that's where the pendant's going to come let back that into this go, movie. My friend. Well, we spend a lot of time with the camera just still shot of that pendant. I know it's coming just back to something, Matt. It's got to be. It's got to be. Gotta, it's got to factor into this plot. Why would those guys want the pendant so bad? It's It's got to be significant. Turns back. It turns out old boy just wants his drugs back. Oh, yeah. And he was like, I'm going to kill you, dude, because you where stole we from me. That Goro is kind of like fucking the puzzle box from Hellraiser. Yeah. Because you've got a sweet, like, spiked barbed wire whip thing with, like, a... Yeah lead weight on the end of it that he uses as his signature weapon, kind of like a pinhead type deal. It is cool. Just spiky chains whipping everywhere around the room. Yeah. Yeah, he gets it around this fucking guy's neck and it kills him. And then you're like, wait a second. I've seen some neck wounds before in this mm -hmm. movie. I'm starting to put some fucking pieces of the puzzle together here. Also, Goro is like a really cool, stereotypical Asian bad guy. Mm -hmm. Is he? He just, he's, he's super he's got, slow, very deliberate. Yeah, just built a whole career playing yeah. the same character, probably. Just the, just the whole movie's just like... <laughs> he's, got, <laughs> he's got a lot of vibes of that uh, guy who beats Mr. Miyagi's ass in the second Karate Kid. Just angry, dour. Miyagi had it coming. Probably talks about honor a lot. Miyagi did have it coming. He wouldn't have left Okinawa like a little bitch for 40 years if he didn't know he was in the wrong. Amen. Adkins is vowing revenge or some shit is my next uh, well, fucking... Yeah. He's meditating right next to the blood stain on the floor in his living room for where his wife was murdered. And I'm like, yeah. dude, the first thing you didn't do was like pull up that carpet and get rid of it. Like you're just going back to your ninja yeah. shit here with her fucking big uh, blood stain uh, still on the floor. He's been baiting on it that nightly. Seems, yeah, that seems yeah. a little macabre right there. Yeah. I was just expecting like 
the camera to pan back and like her wedding dress would be out or something and there'd just, just be like a bunch of crumpled up tissues around yeah. it. Yeah, but yeah. We don't we don't quite go there. Ah, shoulda. Uh, but he does take his wedding ring off and set it down on his little yeah. meditation altar That's there. Right. So I'm like, oh shit. He's this, about to get guy, some pussy. Yeah, he's he's about to hit the clubs. Fuck Fucking, yeah. There's going to be lady boys all over this movie for the rest of the runtime. Uh Oh, no, that's not in my next note, oh, but yeah, that's no. in later, oh, but I, okay. I have that in there, yeah, too. Yeah, I guess okay. he's just, like, vowing to, like, go kill some people or whatever, and he doesn't want to have his wedding ring on because it would Wait, dishonor look. his wife's memory or, I got, or something. I don't know. I got really I confused in this scene. He goes to, like, a, his dojo, and he's talking to somebody about a triple kick. I don't know what's going on. Uh, he's talking about the triple kick? Because later on, some triple kicks happen, and I'm like, triple kick? That was fucking awesome. Yeah, he did. Okay. In this scene... He's, he he goes to this dude, like, he's at his dojo, and he's mm-hmm. like, blah, 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 the triple kick? And dude's like, I don't know, the triple kick. Okay, but I was, like, too busy triple kicks, trying to like, write notes. We should have established this as more of, like, a cool super move he does early on in the movie, because that's yeah. fucking awesome. So I'm glad to hear that it is sort of established, yeah. and I just missed it. Because the next note I have is that he shows up at some other dojo where the bunch of dudes are right. like tatted up right. and practicing some ninja shit. And I'm like, oh, fuck, you're not supposed to be flashing all your tats in Japanese culture. These guys are definitely bad guys. Yeah. And then he just like beats up like six dudes and is like, I don't know, looking for some sort of fucking info or something out of them. Yeah, what did he want to know? Uh, bu- 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 he breaks a dude's arm and is just know. like, tell me where, I don't know, I guess the goons who like tried to rob me are, because right now he's assuming that yeah, these guys yeah, are the guy yeah, that yeah. But at this point, like, it's still some pretty cool fighting. He's taking on guys. We're yeah. doing a thing a lot where, like, the frame rate will, like, slow down and then speed up to, like, make this shot seem, like, more intense or kinetic, yeah. which gets a little grating. It's a little Meh. too much for me in this scene, but it's really <sighs> a minor complaint considering, like, I can see all the stuff. It's choreographed well, and, like, we're not chopping the shit out of it in the editing room. Yeah, I gave him carte blanche on all that shit. I didn't really care. It's a cool effect. I just feel like he's fucking leaning into it a little bit heavy. I was just, again, I'm so accustomed to not being able oh, to see God, shit. These modern action movies, it's just like you go into it, just like, all right, I understand I'm not going to be able to follow anything that's happening in him. We'll just... We'll deal with that right off. We'll write all the action scenes off right at the beginning. Speaking of which, don't forget, act now. You can get six months of HBO Max for just $70 so you can see firsthand for yourself the Zack Snyder director's cut of Justice League. Fucking release the cut. No, that's not the hashtag anymore. They changed it. It's like restore the Snyder verse. That's their new cut. Hashtag restore the Snyder verse. I, I just use my hashtag. This movie killed his daughter. <laughs> oh God, that's not going to get anybody out there getting HBO max subscriptions. Oh shit. Especially now that everybody who had one probably canceled after watching that piece of shit. Wonder woman movie. <laughs> hey man, they already paid for the plug. All right. Okay. Can we can we not let women direct uh, superhero movies anymore? Thank Zach you. Snyder or nothing. Patty Jenkins, Thank you. proven failure at this point. Uh, Wonder Woman three better have Zack Snyder's name under fucking director. That's I'm right. Not watching it. Uh, uh, our next uh, bullet point here I have is we have a big alley fight because apparently he breaks his dude's arm fight. and he's like, "Oh, I know those guys. Yep. They always yep. eat at a restaurant at this time or whatever." This scene, that kid just goes to a restaurant and finds him. Who gives a shit? <laughs> this scene I fucking liked. He shows up in the window of the restaurant it's like like a pervert. There's creep. those two guys, just and they're just glaring through the fucking front window of this having restaurant, having a great time. Uh, yeah, throwing back some sake bombs, yeah. and laughing about what great robbers they are. And then the the waitress comes up and she's like, "Oh, here's this complimentary cookie thing," and they're like, mm. "The fuck mm. this come from?" Yeah, that's right. And she's no, like, "I think it's the pendant." She hands him the pendant. Oh yeah, that's and right. They're like, "How? Where did this come the from?" Magic and drug she's pendant. Like, that big fucking. W- Yoked yeah. white guy out there gave it to me. <laughs> you, you all see that huge white guy it's outside? It's a fucking message, I think. It means friendship. I think he wants to be your friend or whatever. Yeah, but he's taunting them, man. So mm-hmm. they're like, hey, let's go outside and deal with this. Yeah. Immediately, one of the dudes gets his hand cut off. That's right. He rolls up just like 
not in a full ninja outfit, but like a black hoodie yeah. that's like close enough to a ninja outfit. It's a ready outfit. to fuck shit up yeah, outfit. It's like I could do some ninja shit in an alley and then throw this hood back and just be a normal guy like two I'm already, seconds from yeah. now if I need to. I'm already considering the getaway. That's how bad the beating I'm going to give you one is. dude gets ninja starred in the back and he gets his throat slit. Yeah. yeah. The other guy gets his hand chopped off really quick. He's got a lot of bladed implements in this scene yes. that he's using to fuck these guys up. He just... Kills the shit out of him. Yeah, and I'm right. I right didn't here. see it uh, coming. He, he fucking murders the shit out of these guys. But uh, now that the dudes are killed or are already dead, where is this movie going to go? Uh, How is this going to link back to that Goro guy we saw? Blah yeah. blah blah. Like the pendant is apparently like not something anybody was looking for, other than these guys. And I was thinking too much into it. It yeah. just turns out these guys have nothing to do with the rest of the plot, yeah. and there's no reason why. Uh, it should just be like a little. 10 minute movie here like uh i don't know some yeah. guys tried to rob me i thought they killed my wife so i killed them now i just go back to my normal day-to-day shit but maybe they didn't i never got arrested yeah. it's just gonna be one of life's mysteries luckily ninja 2 has got some more tricks up his sleeve because yeah. the next scene we're in fucking thailand he's yeah. traveling to see his old buddy i guess yeah there's Nakabara. a whole classic ninja compound that well, Nakabara lives on well, which is sweet yeah. Okay, so there's a lot of outdoors ninja training. It's pretty cool. There could be more different colors in ninjas, for sure. Well, if there's anything the American Ninjas taught us. Nobody's wearing a fucking mask. It's Nobody's just got a guys in black geese. It's black geese, or some of them are in like a lighter slate gray gi type thing. And I'm like, where's all the red ninjas? Where's all the blue ninjas? I don't respect. Why can I see these ninjas' faces? Exactly. I don't respect any of that shit. So I wrote down that it was Karate Academy. It's not Ninja Academy. I think that's fair. I think that's a fair fucking insult to throw at this movie. Thank you. They're calling it fucking Ninja Academy. We're just at a karate academy. That's all it is. I mean, they're climbing up ropes and stuff, which is some pretty cool ninja shit. Yeah. Cover your fucking face, man. Goddamn right. Then there's like a bunch of talk in Nakabura's office about like some artifacts and yeah. the dude's grandpa or something. And I wrote, I refuse to pay attention to anything he's saying right here. Oh, his... So, Nakabara... Your grandpa and fucking vases you're collecting or something? Boring. His, his dad was one of the Shadow Warriors mentioned in the original news clip. Okay. Where yeah. 50 ninjas Everybody's went into grandpa Myanmar. Was. Was fucking Japan. And only 14 came out alive, and he was... his. Father was one of them. Okay, we 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 learn about that later. His his dad or grandpa or whatever did have some sort of elite fighting crew because that becomes an important plot point later. Well, they establish it here, sir. They establish it here. Yes. Okay, so we're sparring though. Adkins is like, hey, I don't have a ninja outfit. I only have my dumb white karate gi, but yeah. that should be good enough because this is just a karate school as yeah, far as I'm concerned. Getting a tune up at but the karate I sit here academy, and I spar with you assholes. Yeah. We established that like uh, Nakabar has got two main students, or like his his top badasses. Yeah. So it's like, hey, this guy's kind of like bearded and big. Why don't you fight him? Adkins is like, I got some dead wife PTSD yeah. right now. And plus that I'm dude, I'm about to fucking go crazy on this guy. Plus that dude hit on me earlier. That there was some sexual yeah, tension between the totally two of was. them. I was wondering there if totally we were just gonna was. like see their beards smushed together at any point yeah. during this movie. Little disappointed we didn't get to go there. It would have been a nice little twist. Yeah, like very forward thinking. Don't want to disrespect my dead wife, but this new guy's opening up a lot of feelings in me yeah. that I've never experienced before. I've always been a Could very, been very gay, gay guy, Jen. But no, uh, they just spar a little. Atkins gets a potato. He fucking takes one to the dome, yep. and he just gets like out of control throwing receipts. Yeah, back he loses at this guy. It. He grabs a bow staff and just fucking wears his ass out pretty much. Yeah. And everybody's like. Whoa, 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 Scott Adkins. Like, yeah. what the fuck, man? And like, I don't know what sort of ninja school you come from. Nakabara's not even there to, like, call him off. Mm. Like, it's just mm. the other karate students just being like, please, yeah. stop hurting our what, friend. What are we going to do? This white guy's a foot and a yeah. half taller than all of us. Like, it's, it's basically what all the little kids were terrified of in that Seinfeld episode. Like, what if Kramer just went off the deep yeah. end? down in the car. Okay, Joy. You guys both have class at the same time? No, we're in the same class. <laughs> what do you mean you're in the same class? He almost beat me. Kramer, you're fighting children? <laughs> we're all at the same skill level, Jerry. He's nine years old. You don't need karate. You could just wring his neck. I got comfortable. 
Thanks for the juice box, Mrs. Z. Hey, can we stop for ice cream on the way home, Mom? Mm, I don't know about Please! 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 All right. Yeah! Uh, but Nakabura after this is like, dude, you got a fiery rage burning inside of you. You're going to have to like figure out how to deal with that by doing a sweet walking on coals fire yeah. ceremony. That's how you get it thing. done. Every ninja knows that's how you get rid of fiery rage inside of you yep. whenever your wife is butchered. Yeah. So the next scene, Atkins has finally got his top off. Yep. He's standing next to a bunch of burning coals. I wrote... Holy shit, this dude's roided to the gills. Now wonder people keep telling me that I need to watch his straight-to-DVD movies. It's pretty Nobody's gas. roided up in movies like this anymore. Fucking props to this dude for being on the gas yeah. in the 20-teens. Yeah. Uh, but he tries to walk across the coals, and he can't do it because he keeps having too many flashbacks. He keeps to seeing his wife his being dead-ass brutally wife. murdered. Which also, he's just like, how are you having all these visions of her getting her fucking throat slit and shit when you were... Buying seaweed and chocolate. You didn't, you didn't see, see any of this shit happen, man. Fucking I guess it's sort loser. of like an eyes wide shut thing where Tom Cruise keeps imagining other people <laughs> fucking Nicole Kidman and whatnot. <laughs> it's very similar to that. So what that movie's about? Yeah, well, absolutely. It's Tom Cruise going around town being like, I'm a doctor, and like fucking people, and then thinking about like, oh, what if somebody fucks my wife like I'm fucking all around town? That would suck. <laughs> what a very weirdo. Sexy. It's very sexy. He gets all distraught because he can't do the firewalk ceremony, though. He's like, you know what? I'm just going to go to a bar and pick a fight. That'll probably be a better way to get rid of all this aggression. Yeah. And I agree. That's what I do. Here, it works every time. I'm just going to give you my notes on this scene right here. You ready? Lay them on me, man. Goes to city to pick up Lady Boy. Oh. Gets in bar <laughs> fight. Mm -hmm. This guy's a maniac. <laughs> this That's right. dude putting Seagal on blast with arm breaks. Yeah, yeah. Fucking drunk douche bumps into him. They have like a yo bro, what up kind of thing. Before you know it, he's fighting everybody. The in entire this bar. bar. Yeah. He kicks everybody's ass. He breaks every How stool cool was that and every table. Bar, though, and this, huh? oh, I'd love to fucking get oh, drunk Jesus in that outdoor Christ. bar for fucking sure. I wouldn't even get in a fight with everybody else. Either. No. I just like be leaning against a bar all chill or whatever. I'd be just be like, come on over, friend. I'll buy you a drink. Yeah. Maybe break a stool over one guy or something if <laughs> things get heated. It's a, it's unnecessary what he does here. Things yeah. escalate very quickly. He yeah. beats up the whole town essentially. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, he's unhinged, I wrote in all capitals. He's uh, not that fat. But then, like, at one point, he's already beat everybody up, so he's just, like, standing them up again, and, like, just having them take it's free shots on me. his face. Like, hit me again, hit me again. Yeah. I wrote, this dude's looking to be punished. We've got to be building to Goro, whipping his balls with his yeah. weird hook chain whip. Or a That's pegging scene. Clearly got to be what's good. We've established yeah. the hooked whip chain. Right. We've established ball whipping as a thing in yeah. movies. Like, this guy's got a need for some pain. Right. It's time, at some point, his He's balls like, in that whip. I came here connected. to this bar to get a lady boy. Mm -hmm. I was going to be the bottom you have ruined that. That's right, yeah. Now you have to beat me up. It's classic scene whenever our yeah. Marines are overseas in some other land looking for lady boys. Well, <laughs> they can't get that that lady boy uh, itch. They got to get it in other ways, and it usually turns into a drunken bar fight. Semper Fi, friend. Semper Fi, my friends. Thank you for your service. Goro kills the fucking other kid in the next scene, is what I wrote here. Lucas is his name. He Ooh. finds fucking Adkins like picking fruit out in the woods, oh, yeah, all yeah, beat yeah, up, yeah. and he's like, uh, even though we're enemies because you wore my ass out with a bow staff. I still kind of got turned on when you did that. You've been through some shit, man. You look like you got fucking in a bar fight with like eight or ten dudes last night or something. Yeah. Let me pick the fruit. You go take a nap. You need to sleep some of this shit off, man. I'm picking two fruits in this scene. Before man. you know it, though, fucking we see like some images of like a guy show up. Then we see Goro's fucking hook chain mm -hmm. show up. And then this guy just gets the hook chain around his neck with similar pattern, wound pattern, <sighs> vampire-esque as both the that's drug dealer scary. who is stealing and yeah, that's scary. the wife of Scott Adkins. Die, I hate so. to hear that. We got a serial killer in the movie now at this point, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. It's a full-on serial killer movie. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what happens here, man? Adkins is like, wants revenge. He's like, yeah. I've seen these wounds right. before. Fucking Nakabura's like, you know what? There is a guy named Goro who's famous for having a fucking barbed wire whip chain thing that's fucking yeah. awesome. It's got to be that guy. Atkins is like, I'm going to go overseas and fight him. 
And the Nakamura's like, don't do that. That's reckless. You shouldn't do that. If you're going to do that, though, take here's a scroll map. thing that's going to help you out quite a bit. Make sure you take my people's map with you. It's a fucking cool treasure map of graves that have ninja weapons buried in them instead of dead old Asian guys. That's a fucking awesome treasure map to it have. It would have been way cooler if it played the Zelda You Just Got a Item noise. Mm. We're already getting all this fucking ladyboy shit in here. We don't, we don't need these these internet nerds who are into Asian culture Ooh. to get too know. boned up watching these things. <laughs> you hear a Zelda noise, you're fucking... That's going to put him over the top. Was, you know, uh, so yeah, he's like, thanks for the treasure map full of grave robin shit that I got to do. And Akabura's like, wait, man, though. Just remember, a man who seeks revenge always needs to dig two graves. And then Atkins hits him with the line of the fucking movie. They're gonna need a lot more than that. He's like, hell yeah. He's like, bro, I just killed ten people in a bar yeah. just be fucking cuz. Yeah, just because one of them bumped my shoulder. Yeah. When I find the dudes who killed my wife, maybe it could have just been those guys I already killed in an alley. I don't know. Maybe this other guy's just got something to do with it too. I'm unhinged at this point, man. He's like, if there's anything that makes my huge American dick hard, mm-hmm. it's beating up all these guys that are a foot smaller than me. Uh, after this, we're back in Myanmar, and I, yeah. I wrote, "Oh no, we're establishing an annoying comic relief cat." Oh no, character. I was like, "This is going to be the this worst." Is what we need. <laughs> I was like, "Uh, don't need this in the movie." I'm not I said, convinced anybody you're wrong involved in this movie can pull off comedy. I'm not looking for this to happen. Double wrong. I said, "Never too late luckily, for a sidekick." Luckily, Mike the cabbie ends up Fuck being yeah. pretty cool. He's he's not he's not doing too much wisecracking. Nope. He's just you know he's kind of a fast talking guy, but he's in it for the hustle, man. He's yeah. in it to make a dollar. He he has uh, Mike take him to the market. He mm. buys a bunch of fucking yeah, random uh, shit. Myanmar tchotchkes. He's buying like little dolls, like porcelain dolls, and then like slippery eels yep. and a fish. And I'm like, why are we watching this guy do some fucking shopping? This doesn't make any sense. I was happy. Could cut this scene out and make this movie shorter. I was happy because he was like, Mike, take me to a market. And I was like, mm-hmm. don't write off Mike just yet, and he's like, stay here while I shop, and I was like, ooh, Mike's in the picture, Mm -hmm. and then he gets back in the cab, and he's like, take me to my hotel, and by the way, you just fucking work for me now, bro. But you're on retainer. I was like, fuck yeah. At this point, I wrote, Atkins Atkins is kind of wooden and sexless in a similar way that Chuck Norris is. This was striking me here as he was uh, riding around with Mike. But then what's awesome is he gets back to his hotel, he starts pulling apart all these seemingly normal everyday items he bought, and then MacGyvering them into cool badass ninja weapons. I'm like, that scene wasn't a waste of time. It was fucking cool as hell. Says right here, Mm -hmm. dude is ninja MacGyver. I wrote it down too, Explosives, wrist-mounted shivs and whatnot. He's got all kinds of cool ninja shit. So then it's like, all right. We've done a head fake a few times. You thought we were going to introduce Lady Boys into this movie. Uh, sorry for, but now uh, no. we're hitting up seedy clubs. Yeah. Enter the Lady Boys. And even Mike says he's like, if you're going to find a Lady Boy anywhere, it's this club mm-hmm. right here. Well, so he, he goes really around. That, but there's Lady Boys plot. everywhere, and he's like, "Hey, where's Goro? Where's Goro?" Yeah. Eventually, he finds one guy. Which is code for how much do I have to pay to yeah. fuck one of you lady boys in that back <laughs> oh, room? Oh, is that what that is? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I need to write that down. Yeah. Like, travel diary. Which, right, yeah. It's a phrase that could come in handy later. But no, he finds some guy who's like, look, man, are you police? And Atkins is like, do I look like I'm police? Right. And I wrote down, yes, Scott Atkins, you do. As a matter of fact, you might look more like police than anyone I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. So that's a ridiculous... But then the guy... He looks like a narc. He's smarter than that. He knows this guy's a narc. He's like, if you ain't police, smoke some crack out of this light bulb to prove that you ain't a police. Right? And, and Scott Atkins does. He smokes some crack out of a light bulb here. That was pretty, pretty hardcore. Cool I didn't thing see to happen in this movie. Yeah, I didn't like, see that like, shit coming either. He's like, fuck you, I'll smoke crack. Fuck it. So after he smokes a crack... Yeah, he's fucked up. A bunch of dudes fucking show up, and he's fucked up on drugs, and they're right. like, shouldn't be asking around for Goro, man. Now yeah, we're going to wear your ass out and teach you a goddamn lesson. And he's like, 
jokes on you yeah. when I was building I, all those I could still fight great even Asia when I'm weapons cracked out of my mind. I made some fish heart thing that I ate beforehand oh, is to that counteract what, is that what we're the drug. I think that's what they're implying. Okay, here, I, I, I thought he was just like good at doing drugs. Nah. I was like, ooh, they're gonna like bag him and fucking drag him to the compound or whatever. Uh, then it's like, they... nope, nope. He's just like throwing little spikes into their necks and fucking slaughtering all these guys. Yeah, I think they really reached on this one here. Yeah, he ninjas the fuck out of these guys. He throws spikes into their hearts. He slashed their, slashes their throats all good. Yeah. Pretty good ninja in right here. I like that he bought a $100 American worth of drugs off that guy just to try to get to Goro. You fucking, you got a sidekick now. Yeah. When he's not driving you around, he could be fucking chopping this shit up, turning yeah. it again, you know, yeah. make a little profit. Or you maybe you're just fucking hitting that shit while he's driving you around you ain't mm-hmm. married anymore mm-hmm. fuck it back at the hotel adkins is trying to meditate away all the cracky smokes yep but like before he fully can some army dudes like goro's fucking army dudes show up and they just start machine gunning the shit out of the place yeah there's a really long foot chase here i loved it right here this was i was feeling like point break-esque with this foot chase yeah we're going all through this hotel up and down like stairwells camera work Pretty dynamic, pretty cool, like a lot of cool angles like we're shooting this hotel from. You can tell they spent a lot of time like laying this this chase out and like trying to make it cool. Yeah. I appreciated it. But it ends up on the roof where they're like, there's too many of us, Atkins. You're you're being arrested here is what's happening, which he's shirtless again. So I was like, that's pretty sweet. Like we got another excuse to have him running around with his yeah. shirt off. But like, does this guy just not have any buns or what? Like what's his buns looking mm. like? Like guys with machine guns? Get into your hotel room. That's a perfect time for you to just be like, oh, I just got out of the shower. My buns are yeah. in this movie. Or he could Let have, me throw some like sweatpants on real quick or whatever. He could have at least been doing like the Jean-Claude Van Damme. Like, oh, I'm just meditating, stretching, mm-hmm. yoga mm-hmm. and like briefs and right now. Just tiny, like uh, Brazilian yeah. cut fucking man. Banana hammocks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Banana hammocks. Yeah. Some of that, like, once again, you're going to be a throwback to these 80s and 90s movies. Yeah, do it right. You're going to need to get your buns out. You're yeah. going to need to get some lady boys topless at some point in this movie. There's there's some things I'm missing for this supposed throwback. Gratuitism was a two-lane yeah. highway, That's right. my man. It sure was. Went in both directions. Back you in know? the glory days. Yeah. Uh, glory days of glory holes. No way, that's different glory. notes. I was oh, looking shit. at a different movie. Got I was watching. Oh wow. Okay, yeah. back to my ninja two. Uh, okay, he's oh he's tied up to a chair and yep. getting tortured in the next scene, which yeah. is cool. I love a good torture scene. Yeah, they're probably gonna do some really cool stuff here. I'm betting, right? Nah, they just get an iron. Oh, like you know, literally. Just the kind of iron your mom has to like iron the wrinkles out of your clothes and oh. just burn burn his calf a little bit. He's like, ah, that kind of hurts, man. Quit it, dude. But like, uh, they probably burn multiple spots, no, right? It's just the one spot. Oh, but he starts making noises, and I I, I wrote that uh, Atkins might have cummed at the end of this. He's yeah, making noises like he cummed. I think yeah. he might have cummed. Yeah, I put once again building this whole big like pain fucking yeah. fetish he's got, and I'm like. This movie's ending with Goro whipping he's, his balls. I know it's happening. He's thinking about his wife, and then he does this weird shaky lip thing where he's just like... Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. He's making <laughs> making some real sex noises here. He climaxes, and then like the next scene, yep. he's just like on the floor. I think that he's playing possum so that they this wouldn't is, tie him up again is, is, is what we're led to believe. This is the scene they were alluding to in the plot oh, synopsis. where he meditates where he himself meditation to be fake Because like, I was just like... He passed out for whatever, like still tie him up to the chair. They just leave him on the floor like dodos. It allows him to like get up, hide behind the door, kick the shit out of the guards the next time they come in and then steal one of their guard uniforms. Even though he's two feet taller than both of the guards he just beat up. He, he, these things, they're they're made out of other, like, uh, stretchy Asian nope. cloths that we don't know about. They are not. Who's, I who's died this? laughing when I saw him come out in that outfit, per- fitting perfectly fine. He's a gigantic man. <laughs> He's so big. What I died laughing about is as soon as he comes out the door, he just stumbles into a random cockfight. <laughs> I'm just like, well, there's just random cockfights getting thrown together yeah. everywhere in these ninja movies. Yeah. It's fucking crazy. That's how it is out there. So he goes into the ranking officer's office, and he's like, hey, where's Goro, man? And the guy's like, I'm not giving up Goro. And he's like, I'm going to kill you with some scissors then. And he does. Yeah, he's straight up fucking Sid Vicious stabbing Arn Anderson's in the hotel room while in a drunken stupor. Yeah. Right here. Stabs yeah. a guy in the heart with scissors. Yeah. And then on his way out, he sees 
what he thought was his sidekick getting a payoff. No, this guy sold him out. Kick. He sold him out, man. No. He told him where he was staying ah, in the hotel. Dang. Old Mike's a fucking turncoat. He'll fucking get a buck any way he can get it. He's like, where's my money? Where Girl, you poor dumb money? bastard. You don't fucking cross Scott Adkins. Now you're going to get killed with scissors, probably. I wasn't too scared. I he knew doesn't. Mike was... Mike just hides in the back of his cab and is like, hey, hey, dipshit. Bet you thought I was dead, huh? Yeah. Nah, I'm still alive. Drive me to the jungle. And... Mike's like, oh, man, sorry about what happened and shit. Mm -hmm. And he's all like, it's cool. Yeah, it's cool. Just drop me off in the jungle and we'll be even. Which he does. And suddenly we're in fucking Rambo 2. Yeah. Like, Adkins is taking, like, fucking river boats, like, into the heart of darkness. Next scene, there's, like, a scorpion skittle scattling over his boat. It's all sorts of cool jungle shit happening here. Yeah, he seems pretty at peace, though. Yeah, he makes a little fire for himself. He he's chilling too, out. out. But then shit. some of Goro's men just come trampling through the jungle, and he's like, Ooh, there Oh, there are. Goro's guys, let me go hide behind a bush. Fucking, I gotta do some cool throwing knife stuff and kill all these guys. And he does. He starts he does. throwing yeah. shit. There's uh, also a cool shot. He's like throwing knives into people's hearts, but then one of them tosses a grenade his way. So we get a cool jumping away from a grenade explosion mm. shot in the scene, which I fully, fully appreciated. Does not happen nearly enough in movies Thank anymore. You. People having to jump away from exploding grenades. Don't forget, though, before the grenade thing, he threw that homemade bath bomb at that guy's face. Oh, oh no. And it like burned it that and guy's bubbled got all weird. Skin. Yeah, it could, it was, he could have an weird. adverse reaction if he doesn't have all natural ingredients in his it was bath bomb. It's a weird bombs. thing they went out of their way to fit into the movie. Pretty cool, but uh, these guys are all dead, so he's like, all right, enough of me taking random jungle naps. It's time to get out there that scroll and do some some That's grave right. robbing fucking first rate grave robbing here and he do yeah he does i remember what kind of goodies are we gonna get a sweet ninja suit okay a pick of some woman and a little kid why do i care about that what is that jewelry i thought it was gonna be all ninja weapons i was disgusted at first at all the things he was he's yeah. pulling out of these graves yeah. But then in the next scene, he is assembling a ninja sword. And I'm like, oh, thank God there was some weapons down there. Yeah. And uh, what a cool scene it is. He's like, I'm just doing my ninja shit, building this ninja sword. Mm-hmm. What's that? A cobra in the background? Hiss, hiss. Good thing. Slither. Good thing I built this yeah. fucking sword just in time to Cobra's cut that ready snake's to strike. head off. The last second. Dramatic twirl. Decapitates. Swah! It was, I'm going to say jcvd and hard target-esque the way he kills this random snake that shows up that's why scott adkins yeah. was asked to be in hard target too cool and he was in hard target too he I was yeah i saw yeah. i saw him in that oh. on his credits he's the lead which yeah i wrote too if you take the lack of personality of a wooden chuck norris and mix it with the like physicality of an athletic jcvd yeah. that's what you got right here he doesn't have the that's charisma what scott of the JCVD, adkins no. is no he doesn't no, absolutely not yeah so where that Chuck Norris is coming into the There equation. you go. There you Bearded go. and wooden. Yeah. Uh, we are going to do an assault on the, the, the compound now because we're getting to the end of the movie. Yeah. Oh, no. Wait. Before wait. that, oh. he dramatically chops the cobra's head off, and then he starts doing some patented ninja gang signs. Does so gang that, signs, yeah. and he's off. I That's got it, how too. you know. Thank That's you. how you know we're getting Thank into the, the serious Thank shit. Thank you. He's got his ninja gang Thank signs you. going on. So Atkins blow darts a guard who's up on top of the thing. Then he uses a grappling hook to Batman himself up to the roof of this place. I wrote down, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's hell a yeah. cool fucking thing to happen in a movie. You gotta, you gotta do real ninja shit, man. He kills some dudes with real like ninja some sickle looking things. That's real bold. He's throwing shit. a bull at me as a gang sign. Yeah. That's pretty cool. You're halfway to being a ninja. He throws a hand grenade into a party where a bunch of dudes are getting... Once again, a bunch of army like criminal guys there's drunk not, in a room. There's not, not a two whole lady topless... <laughs> Not lady a boys, single topless lady boy anywhere in this fucking room. Like, why are their titties so small? Ninja, ninja two shadow of a tear. Come on, yeah, opportunity <laughs> missed, man. You gotta, you gotta do a little better. Than yeah, that. but Goro's hanging out and he hears all the explosions because like Adkins is now just throwing grenades at all the like fuel tanks around and everything. So yeah, he's like I wrote down, he's a pretty shitty ninja. Yeah. He's doing some off the wall ninja shit here. Like I don't right. know, he's, he's making it up as he goes along. It's not okay. the classic ninja approach. But right. Goro's like, oh shit, somebody's exploding my whole base. I better grab my fucking spiked whip chain and a ninja sword. Go take care of this shit. Uh, when we go you back onto to. the compound, Atkins is having an extended fight with like a little short dude who's like 
pretty thick. He's like Goro's pretty ripped up right hand. Yeah, man. he's yeah. like he's like sort of like Mini Atkins. He's he's matching a move for move. Yeah. We get a real like it's a good boss fight. Lengthy back to back and forth like under boss fight the, here. Yeah, like the, the mini guy boss, you gotta fight the before boss, you get to the yeah. main boss. And I wrote it's going on forever. Uh, we're at like Roddy Piper and Keith David, and uh, they live uh, levels almost, at this point. <laughs> like, almost, like we get like a good six minutes into this thing of them just trading kicks back and forth. But, it made me come to the yeah. conclusion he's going to get to that old man Goro, mm-hmm. and that's going to be a quick one. Oh, it seemed like it. Yeah. So eventually, he uh, gets advantage of the little guy and fucking just guts him like a suckling pig. Stabs I the down. shit out yeah. of him just miserably with a gigantic Bowie knife. Ooh, speaking of stabbing, mm-hmm. finally watched that Possessor movie. Um, oh, uh, yeah, a little fucking Brandon Cronenberg huh? movie. There's a lot of gross gore in that thing, huh? Go check that it's out, folks. Fun. It's kind of fun. I'd say one of the highlights of 2020, a year that didn't have very many. Ooh, by far. Final fight with Goro. Is Hell yeah. Because Goro's like, oh, fuck, you killed my underboss? And then he's like, oh, yeah, well, you killed my wife, you son of a bitch. Yeah, and he's like, so then what? It's sword versus fucking spike whip is what's happening here. But he says an interesting line, though, because oh, oh, he's he like, oh, blah, 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 you killed blah, 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 I'm blah, blah, blah's daughter's Look, pal, I kill a lot of people's wives. You have to be more specific. And he says that his wife mm-hmm. is married to a gaijin, but he says, who? Present tense, as if she's still alive. Whoa. That's fucking crazy. Huh? That's huh? fucking crazy. Huh? He slices Goro in the gut real fast. Atkins and then, takes a ninja star yeah. to the heart. And then just like no sells it and pulls yeah. it out like a badass, which is fucking cool. Yeah, he gets the whip around his neck, and then they're like back to back, and he's sort of like just trying to pull down and strangle him with it. Yeah. But Atkins is too strong. He fucking judo throws the guy over his shoulder. Decent fucking fight here, especially because yeah. everything's been blown up and everything's in flames around them as they're fighting. There's a lot of cool visuals. Yeah, it looks good. Eventually, though, Goro just gets slammed to the ground and then is like making a bunch of weird old man noises. And I'm like, oh, oh, I think that one jarred him. I think he's done. And Atkins does a dramatic like twirl beheading of him, which is, I think, the exact same twirl beheading he does with the, the main bad guy in the first one. So, oh, really? This is pretty much his yippee kaye motherfucker. This, All like, right. I get a guy down and then do the twirl beheading slashing Ooh, thing. It looked cool. Vengeance is done. End of the movie. Except no. What? Weirdly, we're back in Thailand. There's, Why? there's more movie going on. I didn't know either, oh. but we got one more twist up our sleeves here. The, 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 oh. the, the tear has it. It's oh. the shadow of the tear. So we're going back to the magical pendant oh. now, which is uh, powered by the tears of the ancient ninjas is what's going to happen in what? the third act. No, none of that stuff. Oh, okay. Still just nothing with the pendant. All right. Okay. Fucking tearing my hair out yeah. trying to watch this thing. Figuring out why we're why it's not over and why we're back in Thailand. But good news, we're back at Nakabara's yeah. and the delivery guy's back. Yeah, the delivery guy's back. Uh, Adkins is back. He's like, "What up? I killed Goro. Oh, you're getting more and more packages. That's cool. Wait a second. That guy who's always delivering you things, he's got a symbol on his sword that looks kind of like evil. Yeah. Nakabara, my oldest friend. You're not an evil guy, are you? Because. I just Uh, killed uh, like 30 or 40 evil guys. uh, I'm not the guy you want to be evil around, my man. Nakabara, he's like, look, man, I'm going to shoot straight with you. I'm going to be straight with you. I am an evil guy. Yeah. (laughs) But That's I did. What's happening. But I did That's not. Exactly what's happening. But I did not torch Skinner's car. <laughs> I've always admired car owners, and I hope to be one myself as soon as I finish paying off mother. She insists I pay her retroactively for the food I ate as a child. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, unfortunate. Well, Seymour, I make superintendent money, which amply covers both food and car. He's he- like, look, man. Yeah, we killed your wife. Yeah. Yeah, we did it just to trick you into thinking Goro was the guy who did it. Yeah, Yeah, we just wanted Goro dead because we're also selling drugs and he's our main drug selling rival. But does that make us bad guys? Not really. Remember the old days, hanging out at the ninja fucking compound, doing ninja (laughs) stuff, man. Atkins isn't having it. He's like, we're going to have to ninja fight right now is what's going to happen. Yep. And they start going at it. They do. We have the son of Sho Kusugi, Kane Kusugi, Ooh. Scott Adkins, the new blood, and the white guy doing ninja stuff fucking... That's right. This is this is a big time fight here. It is. But I wrote that it's a little bit anticlimactic because we just had a big fight with a bunch of ninja weapons happening while yeah. everything was on fire. Now it's just two guys that are like... Beating each other up yeah, in a stupid mm. office. Like, But luckily, 
triple kick fucking happens. Atkins hits him with a triple kick, sending him through a wall right through. into a room that's full of awesome ninja weapons. It's like so, a secret dojo right inside of the dojo. Right when I was poo-pooing this fight, it's like, cool, cool shit's yeah. happening. I wrote triple kick in all caps. He does a jump kick that connects three times before the guy hits the fucking ground. And really, you did say that he was talking about the triple kick earlier. I think they should have done like It should have been like the whole movie. They should have been like, well, you need to pull off the mythic triple kick. Like, yeah. if you're going to fucking like... If, if you're going to uh, beat the curse of the evil pendant, right. you're going to yeah. have to learn how to pull off the triple kick move. It's the Silly only thing way. in ancient times that's ever done it. The triple kick. There's no defense to but it. No, fucking Nakabara's got a sword, so he picks up a bow staff. He does another triple kick. Then another he like, picks one, up yeah. another sword. It's sword versus sword. Fucking, at some point, Kane connects two swords together to make like a Darth Maul double sword. Yeah, I've seen this before. But then he only does it for like two seconds and is like, no, nah, I was just kidding. I'm, I'm going to disconnect you, it again and only have one sword. And I'm like, what are you going to give that to me? And he doesn't even do anything with it, really. Yeah, it looked really it cool. Weird. It looked cool. I want him to flip that double sword around more. But yeah. he does end up stabbing one of the swords into Adkin's shoulder. And then yeah. he's got like a dead arm for the rest of the fight. He's got to figure out how to one arm fight him, which is pretty cool. He What, what happens? Uh, Nakabara gets sliced mm-hmm. by Casey and Casey That's gets right. stabbed by Nakabara. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, now they're like, then oh. he finds the spike whip. Gimp fight. And it's like, oh, there's two spike whips. Nakabura had one, too. This That's is right. how he was able to do all those fake fucking vampire deaths. That's how. But he's having, He like, killed his wife. Yeah, Atkins has had enough, because now he's having a lot of my dead wife getting killed flashbacks. So he, ironically, kills Nakabura with his own spiked whip weapon. What? By whipping him around the neck the same way he neck whipped his wife. It's fucked up, Now he's bro. got all these vampire fangs That's in his fucking up. neck. He's dead. Then it's pretty much the end. That, that one remaining student who wasn't Greg or whatever who got killed yeah. is like... Oh, oh God, I've stumbled into something. You've destroyed my yeah. sensei's entire office, and I could see him murdered over there. And Atkins is like, oh, hold up, though. Like, go look in that package. I bet you'll find a bunch of drugs. Your sensei's a fucking evil drug dealer, so <laughs> I'm not shedding any tears for that scumbag. You shouldn't either. I like that the kid, in turn, is then like, yeah, look, man, uh, we didn't see shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How about you kick rocks? <laughs> That's <laughs> Nice little gentleman's agreement. I got yeah. no problem with that. Yeah. And then Adkins goes out to the little koi pond. He pulls out that pendant that we established. Finally. Spent like 30 minutes establishing. Finally use it yeah. to make the wish over the magic koi pond to bring <laughs> his wife back to life. No, right? nothing happens. He just throws mean? it in the water. And he's like, remember when we thought this was going to be an important plot point in the movie? I guess it wasn't. Hmm. Also, it's fucking just trash. I should have bought a diamond ring or something. Who wants a dumb looking pendant like this? I'm just going to throw it in the lake. Nobody cares. So you're saying he paid for his wife to be murdered by those people? Essentially, yeah. You That's can look at it that really way. spend the money? You can look at it that way. Like, it could all sort of comes full circle around yeah. here. Yeah. Who's zooming who on this thing? That's it. Sense. That's Ninja 2 Shadow of a Tear, man. Uh, Ninja 2 Electric Boogaloo. We've been talking a lot. It's time for us to take a break. It's time to listen to some coming attractions. What what other ninja movies are we going to be watching for the rest of the month? Answer, mm. all of all them. All of them. And when we come back, Shadow of a Tear is fucking going to Shadow of a Judgment Day. Ooh. Before the movie, we'd like to show you previews of some of our films. Our family grows. The city itself will be our playground to use as we please. Rewarding ourselves and punishing our enemies. We've been looking for you, Miss O'Neill. There is a new enemy. Freaks of nature. Together, we will punish these Preacher. What the heck was that? Looked like sort of a big title in a trench coat.
I love being a turtle! No ordinary man could do it alone. But this is no ordinary man. Pray for death. This has gone far enough. If we are all free to do what we like, I am free to kill those animals. Shokasugi. Shadow Warrior. Deathmaster. Ninja, Judge, and Jury. Vengeance will be his. Pray for death. Please kill me! Those are the two boys that were whacking in my tool shed. This is some pretty good uh, Mr. Anderson you got going there. Hey, way to, way to tell the difference. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You think I was going to fucking amateur move? Think you were doing a Hank Hill right there? Uh, it, oh. I remember fucking King of the Hill coming out <laughs> and being like, fucking sweet. They're making a Mr. Anderson TV show. That's the weirdest idea I've ever yeah, heard. Yeah, yeah. Not quite, not quite. Turned I out. had no idea we were going to flesh that thing all the way out into the a greatest show ever made. Yeah, a fucking little King of the Hill universe that we got from that oh, show. I fucking love King of the Hill. I think I eventually got through all of that. It was, I've been watching it like in chunks on Hulu, okay. like here and there over like the course of the last like six years or whatever. I might have gotten to the end of it. It's got a I'm real sure. yeah. down home, polite ending to it. Maybe I got like a season or two left. I need to get back on the King of the Hill kick here. You owe it to I've yourself. D- I've dug. I've dug into the Sopranos for the first time since it aired. You know, I just started rewatching The Wire the other night. Oh, Wire's a good rewatch. I and did, uh, I did that uh, probably about like I think at the beginning of quarantine. Yeah, in March. I did a, a Wire rewatch. Well, I should say. Uh, it's not even a rewatch. It's a start to watch it all the way through the first time because sure, I fell sure. it off at uh-huh. the first That's goddamn right. time. That's right. But, oh. Yeah. Well worth it, except for maybe just skip that last season but if I, you feel the need to. I kicked around Sopranos. Last season's not great. I kicked yeah. around Sopranos. Sopranos is a little weird worth watching, to watch. Yeah. With. yeah, it's a great show. And it's mm. just like it's it's such a product of its time, though. It doesn't feel that long ago. And you're just like, well, this is this is a weird show that like could not be done anymore. Well, maybe it's way to you. <laughs> but it's shit we love. Like, uh, every time we have to talk at some point in this show, and yeah. it's going to slow down for a second, have strippers stripping in the background. We're yeah. going to have every one of our talking scenes set in a strip club. Every time we slow Genius. down to talk, will you just interject uh, Tony Soprano's breathing? <laughs> I don't think that's going to be very pleasant for anybody listening to this. I mean, like... Agree to disagree. Judgment Day. Here, I got uh, I got all sorts of Judgment Day notes here because this is when we go out to the internet and we see what you, the fine folks of the World Wide Web, had to say about the film that we watched. I got a couple One Bullet reviews. I even found two this week. I stayed sober enough to find two. Before oh. I, I got two Five Bullet reviews. Let's hear from some people who hated this movie, some people who love this movie, and then we'll see where... We mm. land on the mm. Ninja Star rating. Nice. It's gonna take some getting used to there. You're gonna be all right. This first one Ninja Star review is from a letterboxed user named one. Matthias Axberg, who's a straight shooter. That's a really cool He's name. He's gonna give it to you. He's very quick and to the point here. I'm just I can't argue with this point. Can I rebrand myself Matt Axberg? Yeah, I think so. This guy's not using it. He's just doing fucking dumb letterboxed Tyson. reviews on on the online. <laughs> You can come up with something better than that. Don't really get the point of retro stuff like this. If I wanted to see an 80s Ninja B movie, I would look for a Ninja B movie made in the 80s. To the people praising the choreography, editing, cinematography, etc., have you seen stuff like The Raid? The world has moved on. (laughs) 
<laughs> one bullet. From Letterbox user Matthias Axberg. Well, I thought uh, made a good point. That's kind of funny. Made a good point. That's kind of funny. Uh, this next one bullet review is different. Not such a straight shooter. This is somebody who has a bone to pick with the film here. This is a one Ninja Star review from IMDb user APK111985. Nerd alert. He says, Okay for action because of main actor, but director is really bad at cheating. He doesn't even know how to create the area of his storyline. No need to say he has never been there as well. I am from that country. It's a total abusing my country. Almost mm. nothing is correct in the scenes. Whoa. I repeat, Mr. So-called director Isaac Florentine, what a shame. You should not be in movie business. If I could report to some authorized parties, I would request to ban or remove this movie. It is just a bad cheating movie. Sorry for my words. Dear IMDB board, please do not post it if my review is against your regulations. Just bear in mind, this movie is giving wrong information about a country. Hmm. That's it. One bullet from IMDB user APK1111-1985. Does it have a one ninja star link to his credits so you can find out what role he got fired from mm. in Ninja 2, Shadow of a Tear? I'm guessing he's just one of the guys who got his ass kicked in, in the bar. Myanmar. Yeah, <laughs> or, the you know, Myanmar maybe bar. bar or the Bangkok that. bar. Matt, there's a couple people who loved this movie, don't have bones to pick with it. Some five Ninja Star reviews here. This first one I picked just because it's got a lot of really good information in it. Hell that yeah. Use going forward. This is a five Ninja Star review from IMDb user Ivan Drago 21. I'm sorry? Ivan Drago 21. Saw this early at the Fantastic Fest in Austin, Texas, and it is quite possibly the greatest DTV action movie ever made. DTV? Direct-to-video. Oh, okay. Though many would not be proud of it, but I am a DTV expert. I subject myself to watching pretty much every DTV action movie ever made. Okay. Though most of them are just absolutely awful, it is all worth it. When a Unisol region or blood and bone comes along and blows you away. Okay. The main problems with DTV movies are one, zero budget. <laughs> Two, shaky cam slash quick edits. Three, actors not willing to put in the work for the fight scenes to look realistic. And four, stupid plots with dumb romances. Okay. Though Ninja Shadow of a Tear is on a small budget, all of the aforementioned problems are fixed. The movie is completely without shaky cam and quick editing. The plot is very basic, and there is no fat to try to make it anything other than what it is. An incredible action movie. And finally, the incredible Scott Atkins and the amazing stunt team put in some amazing fights. One scene in particular, Scott Atkins versus six guys in a dojo, and the entire fight is filmed in one take with zero editing, like the Alfonso Cuaron of DTV shots. Oh, it boy. was absolutely amazing. Oh, boy. Just an amazing fight movie that takes the best fight scenes ever and mixes it with Rambo, old canon movies from the 80s, and Enter the Dragon, and other Asian flicks from the 70s. Just a perfect movie that looks like a big-budget Hollywood flick. Not a single dollar was wasted, and no goofy CGI or wires were used. I can't recommend this oh, movie enough. Wires. The action is incredible, and everything came together to make one of the best fight films of all time. Hollywood, please wake up and give Adkins and Florentine a budget, and I think you would be amazed mm -hmm. at what they can do. Here's the good part. Mm -hmm. If you are thinking to check out other great DTV movies and Ooh. save yourself the trouble of all the nonsense and garbage I have seen, check out the following. But most importantly, check out Ninja Shadow of a Tear when it is released. It is definitely Blu-ray buy for me. Here's Absolutely. the following that you need to check out. Number one, Universal Soldier Regeneration. Ooh. Number two, Ninja Shadow of a Tear. Number three, Blood and Bone. Number okay. four, Undisputed Three. Ooh, Number also five, Scott Adkins. Wake of Death. Pretty much all oh. the Van Dams are watchable, he says. Oh. Number six, Undisputed Two. And number seven, Universal Soldier Day of Reckoning. But oh, just watch the last 45 minutes, he says. Yeah, duh. Five ninja stars from IMDb user Ivan Drago 21. 
You're doing uh, the Lord's work yeah. there, my yeah. man. Yeah, so parched lips here. You just keep out there, Ivan Drago, twenty whatever. You're we're all yeah, proud. We of have you. one more five bullet review here. Five Ooh. Ninja Star review. Ooh. Another Ninja Star themed Ooh. month here. Uh, it's not just Ivan Drago who loves this movie. There's also an Ivo Cobra who loves this fucking movie right here. Shut the front <laughs> Let's door. Get into official baby oil. Oh hell yeah. Critic, the Slovenian son, Ivo oh. Cobra 8, what he has to say about this film. He starts it off. Disclaimer. If you are a viewer that mainly prefers art house type movies, then you might as well ignore this review. In addition, if you're not able to take an action cult classic martial arts film, ignore this review as well. That's true. We'll both be better off. Yeah, let them know. Ninja 2 Shadow of a Tear is the best film of the two. It is a cult classic action martial arts flick that I really enjoy and love. I consider it as a classic. I am going to be honest. I hate the original film Ninja, which was a copycat of numerous films that I counted. Watching this film on Blu-ray, I have highly enjoyed it. This film seriously surprised me. I heard good things about this film, so I gave it a chance, and it was a great flick. It is fast-paced and highly entertained. I become one of my favorite martial arts films of 2013, along with Skin Trade, another flick that I love. Mm-hmm. That one's got some lady boys in it, I guarantee you. Mm-hmm. Not the biggest fan of Scott Adkins. I got introduced in him by watching him in Undisputed 2, Last Man Standing, 2006, yeah. as Yuri Boyka, which I have enjoyed that flick. I hated Ninja, but liked Universal Soldier, Day of Reckoning. I remember him as a villain in The Expendables 2. Yep. Still, Ninja 2, Shadow of a Tear is a classic sequel that I love, and the acting performances was good, but the fight choreographer was outstanding. The best. The fights in the story for me were realistic. I am considering alongside with Skin Trade and, of course, Rambo 4, Stallone's action flick that I love. Duh. Plot. Ninjutsu Master Casey is back and out for revenge when his pregnant wife is murdered. Of all the ninja films that my favorite films are, Revenge of the Ninja, 1983. Yes. This one, Ninja 2, Shadow of the Tear. Ninja 3, The Domination, 1984. Duh. Ninja Assassin, 2009. American Ninja 2, The Confrontation, 1987. You and love American that one. Ninja, 1985. Those are my favorite ninja films, and this is one of them. The fights are realistic, and also the plot is original, and it is realistic. I love that Casey Bowman is one man on Only Hero who fights of a drug cartel. He has no sidekicks. <laughs> he is alone. Oh, Shots that's fired at Mike. Tell that to Mike the cabbie. That is what I love in action heroes on screen, that they have no sidekicks. Well. Ranks amongst the greatest action movies of our era, says Ed Travis. <laughs> Synapse, I, and he I is right. Agree. About the cast, in this film is also Kane Kusugi, son of a real ninja martial arts master and sensei Sho Kusugi. He also started as Sho's son in Revenge of the Ninja and Pray for Death. Mika Hiji reprises her role as Namiko, Casey's love interest from the first film. She was the only cast to reprise her role from the first film. Shon Suguta did an outstanding performance as Goro, the drug king in Burma. Tim Mann was just awesome as Goro's henchman. I guess oh, he dug deep. Oh, Tim Meadows? I know a lot of people wanted to see a lot of ninjas in this film, but there was only one, Scott Atkins, which I yep. didn't care as long as the action is entertaining and fun. The film isn't long or boring or lame. It is what is a great action martial arts flick, a true classic. Isaac Florentine directed the film well and did a great job. Better he did the first time. The film scenes are excellent, and for a revenge movie, it's really good. It harks back to those classic 80s films. I liked it. Best scene, when he does some crack and takes out some bad guys. That is true. (laughs) I agree. What more do you want? Full of martial arts scenes giving you the same excitement when you saw the classic action movies such as The Matrix. A little difference. Chinese kung fu fights are more often unarmed. As for Japanese ninja fight, I prefer sword fighting since there are so many different ninja blades who kills. I love how Casey makes his own weapon after he takes down the drug dealers. I love how he cut Cobra's head, a real snake, to pieces. That was a real snake, yeah. The opening scene gives us a brief history of the ninja, and several scenes are based on reality. Rather than ninjas being shown as almost cartoon figures, we get to finally see them as the deadly warriors they really are. Yes. There are almost too many awesome fight scenes in this movie to pick a favorite, but I think it has to be the fight sword fight between Casey and Goro by the end of the film, which the sword fight was set in flames. Awesome. It's easily the best fight scene I've seen this year. No shaky cam, no CGI, just Scott Atkins showing us what he can really do. This is his best movie since the Undisputed series, and I really hope we get a third entry overall. Ninja 2 Shadow of a Tear gets a solid 10 by me, which is clearly my favorite action martial arts film of the year. Five Ninja Stars from Ivo Cobra 8. 
I mean, it was the first Ooh. film that wow. Scott Atkins got what? injured on and what? couldn't what? really do all of the it's fighting. He was pushing it so hard, man. So, um, and bring in Tom Atkins to be a stuntman. It all worked out perfect. Uh, how? <laughs> Thrill me. Do you he's think, uncredited, but he's in there. Do you think Ivo Cobra had to resort to a list and look it up, or was just able yeah, to so rattle not, off his favorite not. ninja movies? Yeah. Like it's all it's all up there. What are my favorite ninja movies? Bop, 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 bop. It was impressive, man. Uh, man. <sighs> yeah. What's your final thoughts on your ninja star rating, and maybe your list of favorite ninja movies in the years that came up? Uh, I'll let you know that okay, okay. at the end of the oh, at the oh, review. Gotcha. I'll, right, I'll let yeah, you know. Right. Ninja 2, Shadow of a Tear. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. It started out as a simple guy loves a woman, woman's pregnant. When a man loves a woman. Thank you. And then they kill his woman. Why is it lame pending a K-Jewelers? Yeah, at the the K-Jeweler in the mall, you know? Make sure you buy it when there's not some goons around trying to rob you. Maybe I'll go to... If they do, you chop off their hands and kill them. I'll go to Arnie M's. Get back in your final Because they closed the hot Sam's. Um, Get some of those pretzel sticks and cheese dipping sauce right now. Hell yeah. Good as fuck. The best, bro. So, like, this movie, man, like, I was at a disservice. Like I said, I didn't see that first one, so Mm -hmm. I didn't really know what the hell it's all about. It looks a lot more like a live-action G.I. Joe TV show from early 2000s on the WB than this movie does. So it's got that going for it. I love G.I. Joe. We should have watched that shit. Um, this movie, man, like I said, I thought it was just going to be like a simple, like, Hey, you killed my lady. Now I got to kill you. Simple revenge. Right. A little like yeah. death wish with ninjas and shit. Expecting the magic pendant. And then we got all that bullshit about people's pee paws, oh, disrespecting other people's pee-paws. granddaddies and this guy's dojo. Burma? Where's even Burma on a map? Man, you should have, like, established that shit from the get-go. Like, don't tell me, like, halfway through the fucking movie. Yeah, get that shit all in the newsreel right at the top. Like that. You know, after the opening crawl, we stop paying yeah. attention. That shit really made me check out, which is too bad because the karate shit in here kicks dick. Hell I yeah. liked it a lot. Mm-hmm. Like you said, it was a lot of chain shit. You saw everything. Mm-hmm. Like all the reviews have said, you got to see it. It was fun and it was good. It was hard hitting. It didn't look shitty. I thought it was yeah really, really good impact. Really good uh, fight sequences good here. Impact. But uh, man, Sudden impact that story. Uh, I hated it. I hated it a lot. Oh, oh wow! I can only give it a uh, a one and a half ninja. One stars. and a half ninja stars is a lot lower than I was expecting for a movie that kicks this much dick. I'm just saying. I was into this thing, uh, and it's it's all about the fights. This is a movie that's full of fights, and it only cares about the fights. There's no personality to the filmmaking. Dialogue's wooden. The acting's wooden. Story is lame. It's just a cheap framework for putting ninja fights in the movie. Mm -hmm. But shit looks cool. Everything's on fire when they're fighting. There's a lot of fucking blood and slashing and and dicing. I love all that stuff. Scott Atkins, very physical presence. He's great at doing triple kicks. Great at doing spin kicks. Fucking jumping, flipping what's its nots. Even though he's a big... Yoked to shit, dude. Yeah. I'm happy to see that he's clearly on steroids. More people need to do him. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of fun watching this thing because I didn't let the story get me down. I just ignored it whenever the story was happening and Mm. waited till we got to the next fight scene, and I loved all of them. I think Atkins, he's got the stoic Chuck Norris boringness. He's got the JCVD uh, athleticism. I think if he just had a little bit of... Steven Seagal's dickhead energy. Ooh. Like his I'm a douchey dickhead yeah. thing going on. I'm this the, guy could be the perfect action star, maybe. I'm the best person in this film. As is, I just think he's pretty solid, because it's not like he can deliver a line of dialogue right. or has any personality or anything. But I liked watching him fight. I'm with a strong three bullets here. I think this is oh, a strong shit. recommend. Oh, shit. Ninja to Shadow of a Tear. Again, I, I agree with you. I loved all the fighting. All that shit was great. Mm, that it's like whole 90% of the movie. Yeah, middle of the movie, man, just really was a fucking vacuum. There's a scene where he ro- robs graves. There's a scene where he smokes crack. I can't get too mad at this movie. Ah, I just didn't care for that story. Matt, I know we're going to be having a lot of fun coming up next week, though. There's no point in letting this disagreement drag us down because we got really? a big event. We've got a oh. fucking seminal 
ninja film we're going to be talking about this coming up. Huge. This huge. We're not just talking normal ninjas. We're talking fucking teenage ninjas in the next film. Oh, and surf don't ninjas? Don't get it twisted. We're not talking about those surf ninjas. Three we're ninjas. We're talking about teenage mutant ninjas. Oh, Fucking teenage mutant ninja turtles damn. ninjas. It's going to be a fun time. It's a classic from all our childhood. Eastman and Laird's? Don't pretend like you don't love it. And don't go trying to watch one of those stupid cartoons that Michael Bay did or whatever. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the original from the 90s. If you want to watch that CGI one that... Like, Mutant Ninja Turtles! ...took place right before the Michael Bay ones, that one's not bad. I don't even remember that one, but we're not watching Oh, okay, all right, yeah. Get, the, get all that shit out of yeah, your no, head. No, 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 the first one. Classic Casey Jones-ass Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Next week, here on the podcast. Oh, I'm pretty sure they say fag in it. Oh, God. That's yeah. going to be fun for us. <laughs> but either way, find out if they do or don't on Baby Oil and Blow. Stay, Stay single. single. It's a long road when you're on your own. And it hurts when they tear your dreams apart. Play.